Hi guys, EBP Man here, and today we're going to do a tips and tricks video for the LG V20. I've been receiving some communications, some messages from you all looking for tips and tricks on how to maximize the use of the LG V20. I've also been getting a lot of questions about uh, Note 7 type features, especially for those of you that are coming from the Note 7 and really looked at this phone as being that large screen formatted phone that you're looking for. There are things that are different, uh, especially when it comes to navigation on the LG or the, v, uh, the V20 line, and I'm going to show you how you can uh, configure the phone to act more like the Samsung phone, especially if there's certain things that you're used to and you find it a little quirky. So this will be a rather long video, but it's going to cover every single thing uh, that you need to know about the V20, how to get the best use out of it, and then again, for those of you who are Samsung users, what you should expect and how can you configure it to be more aligned with what you're used to. Let's check it out. So the first tip I want to show you is how do you access the settings area? And this is important, especially for those of you who are going to take advantage of the LG promotion where you can get the free headphones. Now, in order to get those headphones, you need to provide the IMEI. The problem is, is that when you swipe down once, you don't see where the settings area is. Well, uh, in order to get the settings uh, function to appear, you have to swipe down twice. And then here you can get into the settings. This is going to allow you to go into the uh, general and about area to find your IMEI and then uh, input that into the purchase screen uh, when you're enrolling for the LG promotion. So once again, uh, to be able to get into the settings area, you're going to swipe two times and then that's where you get that little cog that you can click on to be able to get into your settings. Now the next tip is about using your phone as a flashlight. We all do this and I always get this question says where is it? I can't find it. Once again when you swipe down you're going to notice that there are a series of icons that are here available and when you try to move left to right you're not going to see them. So how do you get the additional uh, icons or the uh, toggles. By clicking on the little pull down you're going to get additional toggles. And you'll notice right here is that you have your flashlight setting. Uh, so here you'll be able to just turn it on and turn it off. Um, you can also edit this. So I'm going to show you in a couple seconds how to manipulate this so you can get the things that are important up here. But that's where you find your flashlight. So now let's say you want to modify uh, this toggle area. Um, all you really need to do is click on that pull down which is one way or what you can do is bring it down twice to bring up uh, this entire view but you may find that you want the very first couple things here to, to be let's say for example a flashlight let's say you don't travel that much and you have airplane mode and you want to replace it all you have to do is click on the edit button press and hold on the uh, uh, toggle that you want and then you drag it up to the top uh, and now what you have is if I go back if I click on that check and I do it once, you'll notice that your flashlight is one of the top ones there. You can also reorder any of these things. So especially if you don't really use Wi-Fi dialing that much or the screen capture button that you see here, uh, you can actually get rid of that as well. So uh, very easy to manipulate. And one thing to keep in mind is that you can't swipe from right to left once it's pulled down. You cannot swipe one in the short view only in the long view you can swipe and then move back and forth so a lot of flexibility you just have to make sure that you know to click on that pull down and choose edit now coming from the Samsung line of phones especially we saw this uh, with the Note 7 um, some of us got really used to the blue filter uh, that at nighttime made the phone a lot easier to use. Uh, and what this does is it really cuts out um, the brightness and changes some of the colors that the screens are displaying. And the LG also has that feature. It's actually found here in, in the short er, shortcut area or in the toggles. If we swipe over, um, they call it comfort view. This is the blue light filter. All you have to do is tap it and it changes. And it may come up on video. Um, I don't know how clearly it will be. But once you tap on it, you'll be able to just uh, change it so that it's softer and kind of the whites become a little bit yellower. They kind of get a yellow tint to it is the best way I can describe it. So that's bright white. And then that is kind of with that blue light filter on. And there are things that you can do to adjust it. We're going to show how do you adjust the blue light filter and change the tone. But I just wanted to show you that quick shortcut so that you can get to it quickly. Now as we focus on the toggle area here, another thing I wanted to share with you is the fact that the toggle functions have multiple features built inside. So if you were to press and hold on a specific uh, function, if it has a toggle function where you can actually do more, you're going to see a menu pop up. You notice when I clicked on the flashlight, nothing happened. But what I want to do is I'm going to take you to that comfort view. I'm going to press and hold instead of selecting it. And now a shortcut menu or another menu came up. And this is where you can actually adjust the comfort view. You can determine what the blue light filter intensity is going to be so low medium or white or you can determine that you want it to be 
black and white. So you notice by choosing that, all the color disappeared and now everything is in black and white. I can go back to that medium setting and it's going to give me the ability to kind of adjust it. So all the toggles have kind of a, a dual function, uh, or most of them do. All you have to do is press and hold to enable them. So the next thing I wanted to show you is another toggle that I think is really useful for those that have um, a challenge with their vision. You can actually turn on um, color inversion from a toggle and you don't have to go into accessibility to do that. And that's just simply by just choosing that. And again, if that's something that's important to you, all you have to do is choose that function or move it uh, to the beginning if you want to use it that way or enable it just by clicking on that toggle. Now another function that I like is the data uh, saver function. And what that's going to do for you is it's going to minimize if not eliminate any kind of applications that are in the background using data. So this is uh, really great for those of you who are not on uh, unlimited data plans and there are applications for example your email may be fetching email uh, and you may not want it to uh, because you may want to do that only when you're in a Wi-Fi area so by enabling this function basically what you're doing is reducing or eliminating any applications that are pulling data uh, and it will require you to manually do it so it doesn't stop it from happening permanently it just doesn't allow them to do it automatically and you know just like we talked about uh, there are a lot of these features where you can press and hold and you'll get into a more robust or, or clarifying menu and screen and this is definitely one of those apps so data saver is a great way especially if you're coming to the end of your plan and you're running out of data or you just want to be more data conscious now this is another feature that I use and it's kind of like religious to me it's something that it's, happens every night um, most of us use our phones as our alarms. So you have your phone laying next to your desk, and um, every now and then, you know, someone, my mistake, but dials you. Or you have some, you know, telemarketer calling you at a time that you just don't want to receive calls. So I like enabling the uh, a privacy mode, or also something that in some um, applications is called a do not disturb mode. And the neat thing about do not disturb, um, and again, you can toggle that on and off by just tapping it. I'm going to press and hold to go into the main menu function is that you can actually at a specific time of day you can schedule the uh, the event to take place as you can see right here that you can say every day um, as you see here Friday through Saturday I don't want to receive or be bothered um, on the uh, weekend uh, and, and it's basically going to enable this function so that you don't get any calls, any text messages, your phone won't ring. Now, you could do that also for weeknights, and you can configure that. Now, the neat thing about it is that we all know that there are exceptions to that rule. You may have your job, um, your you know a boss that you want to make sure that you're available for, or you can have family members, kids, your mom and dad, someone that you want to be able to, to get a hold of you. So what you could do is you can actually set priorities, and these priorities can be uh, app specific so if you have a work application that notifies you because you're in the tech business that a server is down you can actually set an exception for that you can uh, also do that for contacts and you can say that I want to be able to have um, specific contacts um, my favorite contacts uh, that I get messages from so you can have in this list your mom your dad your wife your husband your kids your cousins whoever you want you'd be able to select it so this is one of the things that um, I really uh, configure every time I get a phone and then the neat thing is that you could do the same thing with messages so all this stuff can be set up so that you can prioritize and really have peace of mind that you'll get messages from those people that you want to get messages from or calls um, when you set this uh, do not disturb mode so definitely check this out now this next tip uh, applies both to LG users but also to Samsung users uh, that are moving over uh, the V20 has a audio adjustment um, or feature that you can go in and you can adjust the way or improve the way the audio is working. Now, uh, unfortunately, it only works with wired headphones, so it doesn't work with Bluetooth. So what you would do is you would plug in your phone, uh, and once you plug your phone in, uh, you, what you're going to be able to do is go into this area that, uh, as you can see there, that hi-fi area. I'm going to press and hold because it's one of those that you can get into. And in this area now, what you can do is you can control the balance. Right, so you have the features here uh, that you can um, establish. So you have the ability to adjust the right and left balance. You have the ability to adjust um, just over the overall experience to a limited way, but still, it's a lot better than not having any adjustment at all. So what I would encourage you to do is to really um, experiment with this Hi-Fi Quad DAC feature and see what's the best audio experience you can get. But keep in mind that it is only available 
if you have, and you know, as soon as I unplug uh, this earpiece, um, it went away. So it's only available when you have headphones plugged in through the headphone jack. Now this next tip uh, is for Samsung users. Uh, one of the things that drove me nuts when I was starting to use the LG line is that the buttons are backwards or maybe they're right depending on where you're coming from. LG people will say that it's the right way and then Samsung people will say it's the wrong way. Uh, but the buttons uh, are different here. So this back button uh, that uh, you have here um, is on the Samsung line over here. And then this one right here, which is your recent apps, is over here. So let's say you want to change that so that it's more like what you're used to. Let me show you how that's done. So to modify the function, all you're going to do is you're going to go into your settings area. And then we're going to go into display. And then you're going to go into home touch buttons. Once you're in home touch buttons, you can actually change the color of the buttons. Um, you can hide them, right? So especially this is useful when you're gaming. Or what you can do is go into the uh, button combination area here. And with the button combination area here, you can, again, change things that are happening, but at the same time, you can actually organize them differently. So now, this is what I'm used to um, as a um, heavy Samsung user. I've changed the order of the buttons the way they are listed. And now it's going to work that way. Now there's another function that you can... Um, that you can do here. Actually, you can configure this even further beyond just ordering the way the icons uh, appear. You can actually add additional icons. So you notice you have a notification and capture in the Q slide function. You can add up to five icons to the very bottom for navigation. So all you have to do is just drag it, put it in place, and then you'll notice that it automatically updates here. So it's uh, very much a real-time experience. So experiment with what you'd like, um, create the kind of experience you want, and then uh, just set it and pretty much forget it because it's going to be that way going forward. Um, and again, this makes it really easy for those of you who are coming from a Samsung line to just get kind of the same navigational features. Now let's talk about personalizing the screen for a couple seconds uh, before we go into some of the areas and we go to this top area here. Um, you'll notice here at the very bottom and on the screen uh, that you have things that are grouped together, you have things that are separate, and what I just wanted to show you is that how you can configure these things. So first of all, creating a group is pretty easy. Uh, all you do is you grab something that you want to be part of a group, drag it on onto another program, and then once you release it, it becomes part of the group. When you open it up, by tapping it, you can rename it, so you can give it a new name. You could also change the color of it if you like, uh, to give it kind of a, a different flair or look. Uh, to get something out of that group, all you got to do is drag it out, just like this, put it wherever you want it, and then the group disappears. So the neat thing about that, there's no edit, there's no delete. All you do is drag and drop to where you want it. Uh, or what do you want to make it part of a group of and then it just automatically happens. Now the next thing is is this bottom area. Let's say also uh, you want to configure or change the way that looks. Same thing happens here. All you do is press and hold. You drag it into the um, position that you want it to be in. So I'm just going to put it right here in the middle. And then once you've done that, um, you're set. So you can move things around really easily and just configure whatever kind of experience you want. If you want it back there, you can do that too. Just put it where you want it and then you let go. You can actually put a group down here as well. So I can take this group, drag it down here, and then you know just leave it there if I want it as part of kind of a shortcut or I can remove it and put it back. So a lot of flexibility when it comes to configuring uh, the way this screen looks and then also you can do the same thing with all these programs. Just realize that there isn't a lot of applications that come in uh, with the V20. I found it to be um, not 100% vanilla like the Google Pixel, but it's pretty close. You know, they don't really have a lot of things. Yeah, you have some AT&T stuff and some LG stuff, uh, but if you do get, for example, the Verizon version of the Pixel, it's going to have some Verizon stuff there as well. So all in all, it's very simple to configure everything that's going on on the screen. Now another function I just wanted to show you is, you know, what do you do if you have applications that you just don't want to have? So we're going to go in here for a second. Um, and it's a little annoying to have all these extra applications uh, remote for DirecTV. I don't have DirecTV. So what do I do and how do I get rid of this stuff because I just don't want to see it. I do want to keep my ATT there and there may be something else here that I want. So all you do is you just press and hold and then you let go and you're going to get an X. It's almost very Apple-like, right, because you press and hold except Apple kind of wiggles. Uh, then all you do is you tap on the X and you say disable. And you just continue to do that for every application that you want to remove. Now, saying remove is kind of a misnomer because you're not removing it. You're just disabling it. It's not uninstalling it. Uh, but, again, this is the closest that you can get. I wish that you could uninstall things that are placed by your carrier, 
carrier, but you can't. So I'm, again, I'm going through and disabling everything I want to get rid of, and I'll do the same thing with this function right here. And now all I have is um, AT&T. So that's a quick way to disable. Now, if it was an application that, for example, um, like a Pokemon that I have installed, uh, as soon as you were to do that, it would uninstall it, right? So you wouldn't have the disable function. You would actually have the uninstall. Now, under home screen, you do have some other features that I just wanted to show you. And again, that's display and home screen. Um, you can select your wallpaper, which is pretty straightforward. But another neat thing that you could do is change um, your slide effect. So right now we have the slide. You can choose breeze, and it's going to give you an example. Panorama of what it would be like. The carousel. Right? Some of them are not really that noticeable about how it works, but what you can do is you can just modify the experience when it comes to how it navigates. You can change the way your apps are sorted. You could also change your grid. So by changing the grid, basically what you're making is the icon smaller and you get more icons that will show up on the screen. So that's a nice uh, feature. Um, you could also determine that you want to hide certain apps. And you know that may be kind of a a soft way to protect something that you don't want someone to play with without putting a lot of security. And then uh, you also have the ability to um, give you some smart bulletins. And smart bulletins, you know, you can get, notif it's almost like notifications, you know, things about LG Health, Calendar, Smart Settings, or the Quick Remote. So again, um, some features that you can take advantage of there as well. Now another neat feature with the phone, um, and I've had this where I've lent my phone to someone, um, and then when I come back, like I'm missing an app, like they inadvertently uninstalled something. So what if um, something was in un uninstalled and you just want to get it back? Uh, press and hold there. You're going to come up to the shortcut screen again, and then what you could do is choose uninstall apps. Now it's not going to uninstall any apps, but it's going to show you over the last 24 hours all the apps that were uninstalled, and then what you can do is reinstall them. So that's a really quick shortcut to get things back. And I really like that because it's convenient. It has happened to me where someone was just playing with my phone and by mistake they deleted something. Now the last um, home screen configuration I want to show you is widgets. So press and hold and then you can come to the widgets area. Now widgets are all about these little shortcuts. Um, they're intelligent little programs that are resting on your screen, they're going to give you the ability to um, access information quickly. So for example, you do have the ability to see LG Health and see how many steps um, you've already uh, walked. Um, your antivirus program, you do have the ability to use uh, Google Maps. And you know, pretty much with every application you install, you're going to get certain widgets that you can use. Now one widget that I really enjoy is um, the ones that, are, that, are, that come with Google. Now, a lot of us are using our phones as our navigation system and we open up Google Maps and when you open up Google Maps uh, for directions it's really not designed to be a GPS it's designed to uh, for you to ask it and get navigation instructions but if you want to use your your phone as a GPS unit just like the ones that are in the car where you actually see direction and everything that's going on this little shortcut is great so you notice how it says driving mode I'm just gonna drop it on there so what the driving mode is going to do is when you select it it will look like like a Garmin GPS or any kind of GPS that is out there or the ones that are embedded in your car it's not going to ask you what destination you want to go to it's just going to come up and show you um, your kind of um, your where your car is and all the relative streets around it. So it's something neat to have and something to have as a shortcut. So now let's spend some time taking a look at the secondary screen that we have here in the top. Um, you have the ability to do a couple things. Um, when you swipe, you have the same toggles that we saw earlier here. Um, you have them here, so it makes it easy to turn things on and off. Uh, you then also have a shortcut. Uh, these are the most recent things that I've done and it's keeping track of all the recent things so each one of these little cogs represents me going to the setting area the fact that I launch Facebook the fact that I've gone into any of these areas are coming up so literally as soon as I choose it it goes into the area that I was in that I navigated in so it's a great little way to you know get into some of those shortcuts so the uh, the top screen um, here also can be configured you can determine if you want to turn it on and off or how it behaves but the neat thing about this feature is that it doesn't really take up that much power so I would encourage you to leave it on you also get um, as you're using um, a media solution to listen to music you'll get all your audio controls here at the very top so a very useful way to um, just have information now one of the things you can do is like as I'm pressing 
interesting here is you can uh, change your signature. So your signature um, is for some folks is coming pre-configured so they're able to see um, kind of their name up there. You can put whatever you want a slogan. It does have a pretty wide area and change the font and you can have how that experience is going to show up. Um, so you can have a handwriting font, a Roboto font as you see there, LG Smart, which I can't tell the difference between the two so it looks like it's the same. Uh, the kind gothic is narrower, uh, more narrow, so you can get more text there. So it's really up to you what you'd like to have to set there, uh, but it's good to just have that um, there. You can also associate things uh, uh, with that signature as far as wallpapers. So you can actually configure your wallpapers um, to, to be tied with that as well. So now this half of the video is really going to focus on um, configuration. It's really going to go into the configuration areas that we see here. Uh, I'm going to talk about every one of these functions and things that you can use. Uh, there are going to be certain things that we'll skip over because they're pretty straightforward, but then there are other things that are, I think, really essential and powerful if you knew that they existed. So let's go ahead and start talking about um, the settings area and all the things that you can do. Now in the settings area, if we look at um, networks, and we'll start with the very first one here. So we'll go into networks. Uh, you do have Wi-Fi calling, and that's pretty straightforward, so we're not going to spend a lot of time in there. But what I like uh, to show you here is the uh, tethering area. So uh, in Bluetooth, um, or actually in the hotspot feature, so you have two type of, uh, of tethering. You can do Bluetooth tethering and mobile hotspot tethering. Now, um, obviously you have to subscribe to it in your plan. But one thing I wanted to give you as a tip, so we're going to go into this area and configure it, uh, and we're going to do, we're going to set up our mobile hotspot, is the fact that you can get a higher performing hotspot experience if you configure uh, just one thing. Uh, notice here you can change the name of what your hotspot is going to be. You can determine to broadcast, that means that everyone will see it. Um, and then, but they still require a password to log in. So this is the password that came pre-configured. Now the area that I really enjoy on configuring and it really makes a difference, especially if you're in an airport or you're somewhere where there's a lot of hotspots and it gets really difficult to get a good connection, is this area right here. So you notice two things you can do. You can set up maximum users, which is going to control who's connecting. So if you're a family of four and only four people should connect, you can set it to four. But what I like doing is changing my channel from 2.4 to 5 gigahertz. And the reason why I do this is because the world, literally, the world is 2.4. And when you're using this hotspot as a 2.4 gigahertz hotspot, uh, you're competing with everyone else that's on the same frequency and that's going to slow things down because it's like having people in the room talking making noise at the same time so change this and you'll see that you will have a faster um, uh, better performing solution because there's very few areas that I found and in my travels that are using 5 gigahertz and you can check this yourself so check your performance on each one and then switch it now I will say that if you go to 5 gigahertz it does not have the the power to punch through walls as well as a 2.4 and that's my personal opinion uh, but if you're in an area that where you're close to your phone which is the typical use of a hotspot on your phone 5 gigahertz to me is the best choice now another feature that I configure with my hotspot is I enable this function here. What's the timeout? So you know, hotspot does take up additional memory or more than memory, additional battery. And what I like, if I have no activity, sometimes I do forget to turn off my hotspot and then I look at my batteries drained. So what you could do is set a timeout. And the timeout is if there's no activity taking place, let's say you shut down your laptop, turned off your tablet, and it's not having a connection, you can save your battery by having a default. So 10 minutes to me is a good number, but you can change it to whatever you'd like, and that's going to save your battery. Now another function that I uh, use often is the share and connect function. And it's really not about sharing um, in, in like with file server or anything like this but I find myself taking pictures and when I take a picture someone looks at me and says gee I would really like that picture can you give it to me most people resort to emailing it to them or posting it on Facebook and then sharing it well what you could do is if you have this Android beam function enabled you could literally tap one phone to the other phone and it will basically transfer that um, the content over to that phone in real time so Android beam is something that I enabled um, NFC is also something that I keep on uh, because again that is is working in in concert with each other, uh, but this is going to allow you also to um, send payments, um, uh, you know, using Android Pay, um, and it's something that I'm a firm believer on. It works really well, so I would enable that. But if you want to save, uh, share a music file, a document file, PDF, you know, any kind of file or a picture, make sure you have these two things enabled so that you can do that and share them across two devices. 
Now the other thing that I find um, really important in my daily usage, um, you could do screen sharing. Um, and screen sharing, if you have a smart TV, if you have an Android TV, um, Apple TV, you can actually just click on this and then what it will do is um, look for devices that are available for you to share with, uh, especially if they're uh, on the same network. And then when you connect it, your screen um, just connects to it. But one thing that I do a lot of and I find, uh, I get a lot of questions on this, uh, is the fact that um, a lot of people still print. Uh, and how do you print from your phone? That becomes a pain, especially if you're looking at an airline ticket or just you know something for a concert. Even though you may have like um, the ticket on your phone, sometimes those phone the readers can't read your phone, and it's always good to have a backup. Well, what you can do here is you notice that I have an HP, and if I click on this, and this is connected to my home, you'll notice that it found my HP uh, printer. So how do you get uh, you know that added there? So what you're going to do is you're going to choose Add Service. And then when you choose Add Service, uh, what you're going to be able to do is, and let's get out of that, let's do this again. You will see um, all the printers that are available. So if you have a Canon printer on your network, you choose Canon. If you have a Samsung, you choose Samsung. Uh, this is, again, Epson. So this has all the major brands. And when you choose it, what will happen is when you go in any of your applications that have printing functions, you'll be able to see that printer and print directly from your phone. This works 100% of the times if you have a network connected printer and it's a modern printer. There are some older printers that it doesn't work with, but I've had very much success with Canon, HP, and Epson depending on where I am and of course if they're modern printers. So now let's take a look at sounds and notifications. There's a lot of things here. Um, some of them are really specific, so or, or you know plain and simple. So I'm just going to let you uh, explore these because it's really about either adjusting the sound or creating ringtones or changing ringtones. And you have a lot of personalization that you can use. Now, one thing that I wanted to highlight, um, and that is, we'll go into uh, the vibrations area. So um, a lot of us put our phones in mute when we're at work, and we want to make sure that we can feel or understand when someone's calling. Um, you do have the ability to modify um, the intensity as well as the type of uh, vibration that you're going to get. Uh, so here you have your vibration sense uh, strength, and you can adjust it. Uh, and it does make a difference, uh, especially like if you put your phone in your purse and then you don't feel it, um, you can increase the, uh, the vibration intensity uh, by just uh, modifying that. Uh, the other thing that you can do is uh, modify notifications and determine which ones you're going to allow notifications coming from and which ones you don't. Uh, there's a lot of apps that you install and you find you know, that you really don't want those kind of notifications popping up, so you can disable it there. Now one other area that I um, don't use myself, but I know a lot of friends that do, and that is getting the caller info read aloud. So if you notice here, message and call voice notifications, it will read aloud the, uh, the contact information, the caller's info. So if you're the type of person that likes to hear that, um, you can enable that, and then that will work for you. Now some of the items on the screen here we've already um, reviewed. So what we're going to do is going to go into the lock screen. So we're going to skip a couple of these. And the first thing I wanted to show you is um, you have some choices here. You can select the lock screen to be used with your fingerprint. Um, you can also use smart lock. And smart lock is a great feature. So we're going to go into this in a second, but I just want to talk to you about smart lock. So with smart lock, um, and let me go ahead and enter my PIN. Uh, with Smart Lock, what you have the ability to do is configure when the lock should work. Uh, then, so let me explain how the use case here. If you are in your car and you're connected to your car in, on, in Bluetooth, you can actually set up a trusted device so that the phone will not lock when it's in your car. So imagine you're in your car, you're listening to music, um, you park and you get a phone call. Why unlock it when the phone is right next to you? So when you have a Bluetooth connection, you could do that. If you're running and you use a running headphone, uh, you can actually have that as a trusted device. Uh, if you are in a Bluetooth speaker uh, in your home, you could do that. You could uh, have a trusted face recognition, trusted voice, um, body detection, which I'm not a fan of, um, and that's just basically if it's on your body um, and, and it's in your pocket, it somehow, somehow looks at your height and determines that it, you know, you're about the right height. Not the most secure, so I wouldn't use that one. And then trusted places is like uh, when you're at home and you're connected to your Wi-Fi and, and you know, you're know you in a trusted place. So you can configure all these, um, and it's very useful, especially I like using it when it's connected to a Bluetooth device like my cell phone, headphone, or my car. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll talk about um, the lock screen. And the lock screen has a couple functions. We'll unlock this. 
that you can work with. You have um, no lock, which I don't recommend. Swipe to unlock, which is the same thing as no lock. Knock pattern, which is a tap. Uh, a pattern that you'll draw on your screen, a pin, a password, or fingerprints. Now, when you use the fingerprint function, let me go ahead and put in my current pin. Uh, there's kind of a science um, or a method to registering fingerprints and making it work um, all the time. So first thing that you could do is uh, you have to register and you'll notice that mine actually has a description. Uh, so you can rename it and it's really important because if you're using a finger that is the, the recognition is not working really well with, what you'll want to do is give it a name so that you know which one you have to correct. Because if it just says finger, you just don't know. So I'm going to add a fingerprint and now this comes up. So I'm going to raise the phone and I'm just going to take this finger and place it on the fingerprint reader. And as I'm doing it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to rotate and I'm getting feedback. You don't have to watch the screen. I'm doing this, this, because you really never touch the fingerprint reader the exact same way every single time. And so you want to create kind of multiple views of what your fingerprint is so that it becomes more accurate. I'm going to click on OK and you notice how it says finger one. I've changed it so that I know which finger uh, I registered. So all you do is you press and hold here and then you rename it. So this was my index finger uh, and it was my left one. And that just helps, you know, save time when it comes to understanding uh, which finger is having a problem or which registration of the finger is having a problem when you're trying to unlock your phone. Now another function that you can enable with your fingerprint um, is the content lock. Now content lock for Samsung users is like private mode and with the private mode you can actually or the content lock you can lock gallery pictures or quick memo items uh, that are hidden uh, from normal view and can only be viewed if you use your fingerprint to view it or a pin. So you'll notice here I enabled the contact lock by turn it and turning it on. Uh, you do have to have for contact content lock you need to have a alternative way of unlocking things so you could either choose a pin or a pattern uh, to do that. So let me show you how that works once you have it enabled. So I'm going to go into my gallery and right now you see I have um, some pictures that I've taken with the camera. We're going to have a separate thing on camera. Uh, so you can see how nice uh, the camera photos uh, are coming out with the with the LG. And there are some pictures though that are um, hidden. And you'll notice right here when I do sh click on that uh, the three uh, icons or three buttons there, the dots, I can say show locked content. But before I do that I can go here and when I tap on it and I click on the top I can actually um, manipulate the photo, I can do a lot of things uh, to it, but then what I can also do is come into this lock area, tap the lock button, and it's going to store it and it will not be visible. Now if I want to be able to see my locked content, I come back to this view, I go here to this uh, three dots, I choose um, show locked files, when I tap on it I could either use a, uh, my pattern or I could use my finger. So I'm going to go ahead and use my finger to unlock it. And now what it's going to show me is the content that was locked. So I have two photos that were locked and I can see that. So this is a good way for you to privatize or to hide content from um, normal view. Um, and it's again very similar to what's available on the uh, Samsung phones. Now there are additional things that you can do on the lock screen. Um, you can change the wallpaper, you can choose the position of the clock, you can create shortcuts, um, you can you know look at what the swipe effect is going to be. One of the things I like doing is turning on the weather animation so I turn that on and you could also put in um, your contact information in case the phone is lost. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on, turn it off, and turn it on again and you'll notice uh, I kind of recognize my finger so I, let me do it again tap twice. You'll notice how um, right now it's raining in my neighborhood and you'll see how uh, it's raining on the screen. So what you can do is um, get that weather effect to show. Now sometimes if you want to wake up your phone um, and you don't want to press the power button, uh, what you do is you just knock twice and you'll be able to see uh, the date and time or any kind of alerts and notifications are showing up. And then you could press the knock twice just to turn it off. Now there are two other functions that I just wanted to talk about under lock, uh, the lock screen uh, and that's the lock timer which is pretty obvious and then there's power lock key lock uh, or power instant lock. I enable this especially since I use my phone for business um, and, and I recommend that everybody do either one or the two but you can determine you know after uh, the screen goes black when you want this 
the device to lock automatically. I like the power key lock, especially since the fingerprint is so easy to use. You just turn it on and then just starts working. All right, so the last um, area that we're going to cover is going to be the general section. So you do have language and keyboard settings uh, that you can enable here. And this is a great area if you want to go into um, with dealing with uh, the spelling correction. You do have uh, text-to-speech output. Uh, you do have the ability to uh, deal with um, with language. So this is an area that I'm not going to spend a lot of time in, but it's something that you can definitely use. Um, you can also download here, if I go into the speech engine, um, you can install data uh, that is going to give you uh, the the actual high definition language on your phone and it won't be as robotic. So this is just an area that you can go into if you'd like to experiment. Now in addition to the language settings and location, you do have accessibility settings and here's where you're going to be able to do additional adjustments. Uh, for vision uh, type accessibility, you can have talk back, you could do, we've already shown this before, read caller info, uh, change the font size, bold the text, uh, work with the display size so that um, items on the screen, you know, you can do zooming. There's a lot of features here, large mouse pointer, so if you do connect a mouse to this, you will be able to see a mouse pointer, high contrast, which we saw, um, as well as several other adjustments. I occasionally use the grayscale, I use this feature. Um, not because of um, any kind of vision problem, but because it also saves battery life. So you can um, do that. And then also um, use the, uh, the power key as the way to end calls. Now you do have hearing type functionality as well. So you have captions, flash alerts. Um, I enable this at times as well, where I have things on mute, but I want to be able to see the uh, flash flashing, letting me know that there's a call coming in. So you can enable that, uh, and that's a great feature to have. And let's go ahead and go out. Uh, then you have also motor and cognition. Um, you know you have a touch assistant that's going to make um, be a, it's going to be more assistive when you're accessing uh, the screen, as well as several other features that you have here that you can enable. So really taking into account um, any of these disabilities um, by pr creating these kind of accessibility features. Now under the general area, uh, there are the smart settings and probably this is one of my favorite areas um, when using um, LG products. And the smart areas or the smart setting really creates some intelligent or macros as we probably called it many years ago, that um, things that happen automatically based on certain triggers. So for example, when I'm at home, and you can establish what home is based on your address, um, you want certain things to happen, like um, turn off your phone, um, enable Bluetooth, turn on Wi-Fi. So this will happen immediately when you walk into home setting. When you're away from home, you may tell the phone, turn off the Wi-Fi, right? And to change your sound profile from a v mute to on. You also have um, things that can happen when you, you plug in the phone. When you plug in the phone and the phone is charging, um, or in this case, uh, when earphones are plugged, what do you want it to do? So all these areas are like these little smart uh, features. What happens when you plug in, um, when you connect to Bluetooth? You can set it so that an app launches and you can actually listen to Pandora as soon as you do that. So, and you can select which device it will take place with. So the smart settings is an area that I would recommend that you experiment and play with it because there's just a, a wealth of kind of experience changes that you can have by choosing the one that would make the most sense for you. Now once you have the multi-window function on, um, if you'd like to disable it or switch the multi-window app, all you do is click on this multi-window and then you choose your what you want to have um, in that setting if it supports it or not. So I'll go back to my gallery and then what I could do is then choose um, either to go back as I did there or I could go back to another uh, multi-window function. But the multi-window functionality is a pretty cool feature for those of you, again, that want to have two apps up at the same time. But um, keep in mind that when you're looking at a multi-window function, you want to make sure that it has more than that little uh, sticky or the, the uh, push pin. You want to make sure that it has that double uh, icon there that represents the multi-window capability. Now the smart cleaning feature is another feature that I enjoy. Um, it really allows you to clean up your phone so um, as you're browsing the internet, as you're downloading things, um, it keeps um, your memory, um, applications that may be misbehaving, all these things in check. So as you can see here it's telling you um, if you have any temporary files, you can say delete them and clear them. You can look at your download folder and delete any content that's there. You can look at apps that are um, haven't been used, you can remove them as well. So this is kind of a little maintenance area that uh, keeps your phone up to date and maintained. 
Now the next function I wanted to show you is the multi-window function. Uh, multi-window function gives you the ability to see more than one app at the same time on the screen. So all you do is you go into this multitasking area and you notice that you have the ability to pin which means make uh, something on the app stick or you have this other icon right here which is the kind of the multi-window function. It's going to give you the ability to store or, or position something on the screen. So I'm going to say done and you notice how I have Google on the top. Now what I can do is I can go down here and find something that I'd like to be able to focus on as well. So now I have two applications um, connected at the same time and I can adjust, uh, I can change the focus from one to the other. Right? Um, I can um, again have access to both at the same time and the power of this function here is you can actually be surfing the web and let's say um, on your Google navigation um, you know just watching where you're going or if you're an Uber for example you can have your Uber app here and you can have the other application at the same time at the top so this gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to being able to see two things at the same time and it's something frankly that we saw a lot with Samsung but it's also available here now one of the things that I also get asked a lot about is how do I get the battery percentage to show up on the top. So I'm going to show you two functions. Uh, first I'm going to show you how we can use the search function uh, and that way if you're looking for something um, you don't have to uh, you know, look through all the menus. What you can do is just type in the word battery and you notice how it breaks things up. And notice what we have right here, battery percentage on status bar. So I'm going to choose that and what you can then do is you can determine um, if you want to show that on the status bar or not. So enable or disable and then you can see that 74% show up there. Um, you can also set up when the battery saver is going to turn on. It does not have ultra power savings um, like the uh, Samsung line does but you can um, have it consume less power once it reaches 15% or you can change your percentage however you'd like. So here's how you can get that little percentage to show up on top of the screen. So this concludes our tips and tricks for the LG uh, V20. If you have any comments or questions or you have some tips that you'd like to share, please share them in the comment area below. Um, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Enjoy your V20. And as always, don't forget to share and subscribe. Keep an eye out for accessories and more products that we'll review that will be accessories for the V20 in the days to come. Thanks for watching.